Hey there, I'm Bruce Ulrich. Welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I made the Fisher Shop flip top cart. So this is a plan made by my friend Drew Fisher. I will leave links below to all of his information. Go check out the plans, pick some up, build it for yourself. Uh, they're very thorough plans and I walked right through the steps. If you don't know, Drew and I uh, do a podcast called We Built the Thing with another guy, Mark, from Gunflint Designs. So if you don't already listen, go check out We Built the Thing. That's my bedtime. Mm, geez. Yeah. Murder, she wrote, is uh, I got to go catch some Matlock. <laughs> <laughs> I used to watch a bunch of Matlock with my dad. Hmm, I said it jokingly. Yeah, <laughs> and I went there. <laughs> I also had some help in the shop this week. You'll be seeing Jenny and Davis from the channel Jenny and Davis helping me throughout this project. Uh, stay to the end because I'm going to tell you a little bit more about them and their channel and we have some fun along the way. So let me show you how I made this flip top cart. This project started out by breaking down all of the materials. There is one sheet of three quarter inch plywood and a half sheet of half inch plywood. For the full sheet, we started out using the circular saw and then moved over to the table saw. Once that milling was out of the way, we turned our attention to the knob for the drawer. Davis wanted to turn something on my lathe, so we found a piece of unnecessary walnut, chucked it in the lathe, and started turning. I gave him free range for what style of knob he wanted to create, and he ended up making a drawer knob that looked like an actual mini doorknob. I think it's pretty cool. We got a little distracted later that day because Jenny wanted to turn something on the lathe also. She ended up turning a French rolling pin, so that was pretty cool. I moved on to milling up a nice piece of white oak for the drawer front and then Jenny started breaking down the 2x4s for the structure of the flipping part of the cart. We ripped down the rounded edges of the 2x4s on the table saw and then started laying out some of the cuts that needed to be made on the sides. Next, we drilled out the holes for the pipe to go through and then cut the side profiles with a combo of a jigsaw and a bandsaw. Out in the shop today and look who I got with me. You want to touch the button? Uh, of course. Go. We needed to attach the sides to the bottom, and pocket holes were the easiest way. Then I was pretty much on my own. We ran out of time to finish the project together since Jenny and Davis had to get to their next destination.
I assembled the drawer and then started working on the case. I laid out the cuts that needed to be made in the top piece and handled that on the bandsaw. It sure was helpful to have these plans to reference on my phone while I was building. I had the PDF pulled up from Drew's plans and they were really helpful. I added some more pocket holes for the drawer component and started assembling. It was a little bit tough to get the drill in there to actually put the screws in because I shortened that section about three quarters of an inch from Drew's plans. It's not a big deal because I ended up getting it done, but it sure would have been easier with a little bit more space. You know, when you're dealing with warped plywood, it just doesn't always go well. So I got this plywood basically free, so when they put it out on the curb, that's probably the reason why, but it's hard to turn that up for me. Um, basically building most of this cart at no cost. Um, so I ended up having to shim something because it just was so bowed that I couldn't quite make it work. Let me show you. Ended up adding a little shim right there. Not a big deal. Made everything work. Now it was time to install the drawer slides. I used a half inch spacer to raise them up a bit and then secured the drawer to the slides. Once I got the drawer front in the right spot, I attached it from the inside with a couple of screws. Then I pre-drilled the hole in the knob that Davis turned and attached it to the front of the drawer. This thing looks so cool. Stand for it probably on the tool wall. I used this one finally for that walnut door. It's yeah. a beast. Really? Oh man, that yellow bar, feel the weight of it. Yeah. I laid out where the pieces needed to go to make up the flipping part and then glued them to the bottom of the flip top. I needed to cut some slots for wires in the 2x4, so I just took them to the crosscut sled on my table saw and did them both at the same time. Then I glued them in and secured them with some screws. Next I'm making a quick pull for the upper front that is removable to get to the surge protector. I'm doing a bit of an experiment with a bowl bit to cut a profile in the underside of the pole. This is really just a proof of concept for an upcoming build that I'll be using it on. I think it worked pretty well, but when I do it on the next project, I'll make sure the piece is a little thicker so it's easier to get my fingers behind there. I like the look of the rounded edge from the bowl bit and I'll definitely be doing this again. Off camera, I trimmed the pole to its final size. Next, I needed to cut the iron pipe in half. Drew's plan called for two lengths of pipe, but it was cheaper to just buy one with a threaded part on both ends. Well, I needed to cut them to final size later anyway, so I figured it was not that big a deal to just cut this one in half to start with. I added some double locking casters to the bottom and took it for a quick spin. Now it was time to start some of the final assembly. I added the pipes to the sides so they would suspend the platform. I cut off the plug from a surge protector so I could run the wire through a T connector and then out one of the pipes on the side. I added some floor flanges to help stabilize the pipes and marked the final size that needed to be cut off. Be sure to remove the burr on the inside of the pipes also so it doesn't grab you or the wire. The shortest screws that would work to secure the flanges were too long and poked through just a little bit. Not a problem, I just took the cutoff wheel and nipped them right off. 
After I got it all put back together and got both pipes threaded into the T-connector, I secured the T-connector to a support block with one of these tie-down straps. Now it was time to wire another plug onto the wire. I picked up one from the store and not being very familiar with how to wire it, I watched Drew's video again and did some more research. Then I discovered that the way it needed to be wired was printed right on the inside of the plug. The black wire goes to the brass screw and the white wire goes to the silver screw. The green wire then connects to the green screw. If you don't feel comfortable doing this, don't. I secured the top of the flip top so I could get the latches attached. Then it was time to mark out for the tool that will live on the bottom. I'm putting my slow speed grinder on that side, so I just drilled some holes and attached it using bolts and washers. On the top side, I'm putting this new oscillating belt sander. This is going to be a big help in the shop for me and I'm looking forward to putting it to work. I drilled out a couple of holes, one on each side, so the cords from each tool could go through to the center and be captured. That way, I wouldn't have to worry with wires all of the time. This is part of Drew's design, and I think it's a fantastic idea. After I got both machines plugged in and secured, I reattached the top. Oh, and I thought I'd add a little Duresta style tag to the side of it. I oiled the hardwood drawer face and pulls, added the extra parts to the drawer with a few quick holders I made, and then tested everything out again. This project was done. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you checking out this video. As you've seen, I had these two folks here. This is Jenny and Davis. They have a channel, Jenny and Davis, really original. I know. Yeah. We like to keep it simple. Yeah, but they have a channel that uh, they, they go into more about uh, how to make money with your woodworking hobby, turning it into a business, that type of thing. They did a deep dive on one of my processes, and that's going to be over on their channel. Do you want to give a little teaser about what that is? Yeah, so basically we talked to Bruce a lot about how he does his cutting boards, um, what inventory he keeps, the processes he has to keep labor down um, and so he can maximize profits. Yeah, so go check out that whole video. I'll link to it below. Um, the, if you want plans to this flip cart that we built, it is not my design. So I'll link to Drew Fisher's plans from Fisher Shop. That's the one that I used and they're excellent plans, very detailed. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. Thanks to you guys for coming and helping me build this and I'll see you next time. Did we just do a one take wonder? I think we did. We might not even need to re-record that. <laughs> there goes the pediatrician. He probably will. <laughs> you can't stop it. <laughs> that look proper for a pediatrician. Proper to be like, what's going on? Really?